So to do 17 and 5.4, I have y double prime plus 6y prime plus 9y equals e to the 2x times the quantity e3 minus 5x. What do you do with this stuff? Okay, you could distribute this stuff through. All right, sure. Okay. Then what? Cool. That seems like a great idea. So if we make the homogeneous version, right? And then convert to a auxiliary. Auxiliary equation. So we got r squared plus six r plus nine equals zero. So r plus three squared. Which tells us that we're looking at r plus three quantity squared is zero, which means that R is negative three, negative three. Negative three and negative three, which means that my homogeneous solution looks like C1 plus C2 X C1 e to the negative three X plus C2 X e to the negative three X. Cool? Yes? What was I worried about? Uh, matching. matching. Yeah, I want to like look up here and think, okay, so there's an e to the 2x. What root would that go with? Nothing. Yeah, it doesn't match one of these roots, but what root would it go with? Like, what am I, what would match? Uh, R two. Yeah, if I had, had R equals 2 down here, mm -hmm. right, I'd be like, whoa, hang on, those match. I'd have to do something else, right? Is, is the sec the x one for the next the c two is that because of the five x to the two x or is that no this x here is one. because this is a repeated root okay so normally this would be c one e to the r one x plus c two e to the r two x but r one and r two are the same so those would just collapse right into yeah. only one thing yeah. so you need a second one and the trick that we learned to put a second one in there is to put an x in there. And you can see that out of a ROM scan or a couple other spots. Or you could just guess, and it would turn out to work. Otherwise, it would just be C1 plus C2 times E to the minus 3X. Exactly, which may as well just be C1 E to the minus 3X. But I know I need two initial conditions. Yeah. And that wouldn't be enough. So, all right. So now that I know that this doesn't match that root, what do I do with my, like, what's my guess for this? Yeah, I, okay, so I'm kind of thinking method of undetermined coefficients, right? And method of undetermined coefficients says I should guess y is e to the 2x times. Which depends if you want to split it or not. Oh, yeah, do you want to use the superposition principle or not? I'm going to not. Well, I thought the superposition only worked if you were adding, or is it for multiplication too? On this, you could use the superposition principle, right? On this one, you can't because you're multiplying, but you could distribute for this. Oh, I get what you're saying. I'm just going to look at this as being an exponential function times a polynomial, right? Yeah. What about to say y equals u e to the 2x, and get rid of the 2x completely, and just get an equation of u equals uh, Sure, you could do that too. That would get you the kind of the idea for method of undetermined coefficients. I'm going to just go along with this is a polynomial of degree one, right? Mm -hmm. So in here, I'm going to guess a polynomial of degree one. Guys with me on that? And then A and the B there, those are the undetermined coefficients part, right? And then I'm going to Take y prime, which is going to be 2u to the 2x times a plus bx plus. Uh, this is the spot I probably should have multiplied this out. b to the 2x. Okay, cool. So a little product rule, 
right? Maybe mind some like terms. So I think I got e to the two x times two a plus b plus two b x e to the two x. Is with that? It seems like it's really messy if you do it that way. Yeah, it kind of is. I mean, as opposed to just guessing a regular mu and then solving. Yeah, yeah. Just, it, it's so much. Yeah, I noticed on the homework, if you just set it u or mu or whatever, yeah. and then your, your, your product rules are snappy, and then you can just yeah. do them later when it's all um, condensed down. Condensed yeah, down that's probably a good idea. Um, yeah. You can definitely do that. It should work just fine. Uh, let's see. So, I guess I started this. And just finish it. So I want you to, or y double prime. So I think I got four a plus two b times e to the two x. And then this guy needs a product rule, so I got two b e to the two x plus. 4bx e to the 2x. Okay, and then what do I do with all this uh, stuff? Shove. I'm actually missing something on your first word. I was looking at some of the So I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. derivative of the e thing yeah. times this guy that plus the derivative of this guy, which is just b, yeah, that times works. that guy. I'm looking at conversion okay. from that to the other side of the sign. So oh, I think you missed two on the b. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many. That should be more or, I think no. this. No. That no. stuff is a e to the 2x. Yes. And so is this stuff. Uh, so that's a 2a e to the 2x plus b e to the 2x. Okay. So all told, that's 2a plus b e to the 2x. Plus 2, yeah. And then I needed a this part, which is a plus 2bx e to the 2x. Okay. Sorry about that. I played a little fast and loose there. All right, cram that stuff up in here. So I got. Oh, actually, we should probably divide through by e to the 2x, right? Yes. Before we do that anything. Nice. <clears throat> so let me just forget that those are there at all. So I think I have a 4a plus 2b plus two more b's plus 4bx plus 6 times 2a. 2a plus b plus 2bx plus 2bx plus 9 times, did I screw something up? Mm -hmm. a plus bx. a plus bx. And then this is all supposed to be that. So this is all supposed to equal 3e to the 2x minus 5. Wouldn't it be minus 5x? 3 minus 5x. 3 minus 5x. Thank you. <laughs> and then we just need to match the bits and bobs, right? Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> so let's carefully distribute. By carefully di distribute, I mean I'm going to distribute like this. So that none of you could spot any arithmetic error I just made. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, take that. And then let's see, I need to equate the three. With which bits of this? Tons of that stuff. Tons of this stuff. This stuff, and this stuff, and that stuff. Yeah. Well, if, you, if you do the B, if you do the X part first, those are only connected to Bs, and then you can. Yeah, it should, I hope, be pretty chill. So, how many A's do I have total in the stuff I just underlined? Three. How about 25? Well, 25. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I think I got four ten Bs. 
and that's supposed to be 3. And then I think minus 5 is supposed to equal the stuff with the x's. Yeah. So that would be that one, that one, and that one. So that would be 25 again. Okay, so I think I found B was negative of a fifth, I think. And A then is whatever you get out of this when you plug in negative of a fifth. So that would be negative 2. So add uh, one. positive of a fifth. Yep. Okay, so my method of undetermined coefficients guess gets me to this guy, right? Which is y is e to the 2x times 1 fifth minus 1 fifth x. Okay, what do I do with that? Jam it onto the end of that. Jam it onto the end of the homogeneous version, right? So all told, I should have an O. Oh, I made a no-no this whole time, didn't I? Okay. <laughs> it's just shitty notation, not actually a bad. Oh, it should be YP. Yeah, really, I should have been talking about guessing Y yeah. P, right? Or Y somehow decorated different than the general solution, <laughs> which is what I ought to be writing down here. Yeah. So, forgive me for that. I think I have, oh, it's cool, this one's blue. <laughs> So the blue one is made out of the homogeneous one. So that's C1 e to the minus 3x plus C2 x e to the minus 3x. And then I have to add the black y, right, which is e to the 2x over 5 times 1 minus x. Cool. Sick. General solution. Check that. Yeah, you're probably right about putting just a mu in there. Yeah, we, can you show can you show that? Like how what would you do? What would you replace with the mu? Like? Yeah, so I probably if I was going to do it with just a mu, right? Instead of so when I went back here to my initial guess, right? Instead of guessing y p is e to the two x times a plus b x, probably could just get away with guessing y p is e to the 2x times mu of x, right? And then, okay, so y p prime is e to the 2x times mu prime plus 2 e to the 2x mu. And then y p double prime is, well, where the hell you get out of that? e to the 2x mu double prime plus e to the, oops, 2, e to the 2x mu prime plus, and I did that one already, so that would be twice, e to the 2x mu prime plus 4, e to the 2x mu, I think. There's actually a formula yeah. you can apply there. Sure. Um, it makes it kind of quick. I don't remember. Not, not a formula, but like a trend. Yeah, yeah, the kind of trend you could notice is that this guy here, right, is really strongly related to that guy. Because, of course, you're really differentiating this thing to get that stuff. But you already differentiated this thing once. That was just this stuff. So you can kind of spot some trendiness to keep track of this thing. Like, like what well, you'll get is uh, if you have just a mu sub so function times e to the alpha x, you'll get like mu double prime e to the alpha x, and then two times alpha yeah, that's mu prime e to the alpha x, yes. and, then, and, then and then alpha squared, alpha squared times, e to the yeah. and then you could cram all this back up in here, right, and then divide through by e to the 2x, and you should get, well, you'll get an equation that says something like a mu double prime plus b mu prime plus mu equals some polynomial, right? Oops, c maybe. Mm -hmm. 
is a polynomial. And so you might say, oh, well, what if you use a polynomial? And then you take a couple derivatives, cram some stuff in there. You're still going to end up guessing, okay, like, I know mu should be of the form a plus bx. You still have to observe that, but you can chase a couple fewer constants through this thing. It's a little, it's and just have a little, a little, little more bit pattern. easier. A little bit easier. It's yeah. still a lot of work, though. Yeah, you're going to chase a bunch of constants around eventually. It's just, do you want to chase them around while you're differentiating or afterwards? Afterwards might actually be a really good idea. Oh, yeah, there will still be 25 A's and B's in there. Yeah. It's just that you won't have to keep track of combining like terms with A's and right. B's while you're differentiating. 